Hi, I'm Kat, and in this video I will show you how to read and understand friendship bracelet alpha patterns. Now if you haven't seen my video on how to read and understand regular patterns, or if you haven't seen my video on how to do the four types of knots, I highly recommend that you watch those videos before you move on to this one, because that will give you a more general understanding of how to make these bracelets. And then after you watch those, I recommend you practice on a candy stripe bracelet before you move on to these, because they are a little bit more complicated. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell next to it so you get updates when I post new videos. Follow me on social media at Katrinosity. Check out my podcast at mdxpods.com. And if you like this video, please click the like button. It really helps me out. So this is the pattern we are working with. It's just a little banana, super simple. But for the purposes of instructing you, I am going to turn it upside down. So right now we are just going to focus on the white and yellow parts. You'll see that it is seven squares across. If you look at these patterns, there's usually a longer side and a shorter side. So always go with the shorter side for your rows. And I have this white string that I'm going to use for the white portions. And since the design, the bulk of it is yellow, those are going to be the color of my base strings. So I have seven yellow strings for my base string and I've got this really long white string that I'm going to be tying on with and making the bulk of the bracelet background with. Now, since this is such a tiny pattern, um, when you're using small patterns like this, you should start the bracelet with several rows of empty space first. Then I've done all of those empty rows and now I've done the first row in all white and I'm ready to move on to this row that has two white, two yellow, and three white. And since the string is on the right side of the bracelet, I'm gonna be working from right to left. With these grid patterns, you don't really have to go in any specific direction. Since I'm going from right to left, I'm going to be doing backward knots. So I just did these first two white knots, backward knots. Now these next two need to be yellow. So that means I need to tie onto the white string with the yellow string. So in order to do that, I am going to do a forward knot. Now that forward knot is gonna make those strings swap places. So now that yellow string is on the right and the white string is still moving from right to left. Now I'm going to do the next knot, another forward knot, and that's going to have the same effect. So now my white string is ready to continue on with those next three white knots. And I'll just do those the exact same way I did the first two. So I'm going to be doing backward knots, that way the string will continue moving from right to left. Now, if you don't know how to do the four types of knots, again, I have to insist that you go back and watch my video on how to tie those knots. I'm not gonna be showing you how to tie them in this video. I'm just gonna be showing you how to read these patterns. So that is basically the first row of the pattern. You did two white knots and two yellow knots and then finished it off with three white knots. So now that string is on the left side. So we're working from left to right. You're doing two white, three yellow, and two white. And you're just gonna use that exact same white string. Move it down and tie onto the string you just tied onto, and that is gonna be your first white knot. Then keep going from left to right. Now you're moving on to those yellow knots. So you did two white knots, now you'll do three yellow knots. And <laughs> when I do these setups, I basically have my camera pointed straight down on my tripod. So sorry these knots don't look fantastic, but you get the general idea. So that is the next row. You've done that one and you're going to move on to the next row. Three white, three yellow, and one white, and you're going back in the opposite direction. Again, you're gonna tie onto the same string that you just tied onto. So you just did a forward knot on that yellow string. You're gonna use that white string again and do a backward knot, then do another backward knot on the string next to it, and keep going with your pattern. Now this is a very straightforward pattern, but pretty much all of these bracelets are gonna work the exact same way, especially if they're only two colors. If they're only two colors, whatever color your design is, is going to be your base strings, and then you'll tie on with a string that is the color of your background. So in this case, that is the white string. So I'm just gonna fast forward through all of this and do the bulk of the banana. Now we've gotten to a row that has these three white knots, then a yellow knot, then two brown knots, but we don't have a brown string. So what do you do? Well, I will show you. 
Fast forwarding through the other knots, you did your white knot and your yellow knot. And now we're going to bring in the brown string. And you're going to bring in the brown string the same way you brought in the white string at the very beginning. Just tie a knot in the end of it and put it under your clipboard or you can tape it down to the surface. And these three strings already have knots on them in this row. You did the two white knots and the one yellow knot. So your brown string, which is the new color you're bringing in, is going to go underneath the strings that are already inside knots. And it's going to go over this white string that you've been using to tie on. See that it's going underneath the strings that are already in knots and this white string is the tying string so it's going to go over the top of the tying string and just going to skip over it. Now this yellow string on pretty much the center of the bracelet is going to tie on to that and it's just replacing the white string. So now the brown string is basically your knotting or tying string. So you did your first knot in brown. Now you're going to keep going with that brown string the same way you kept going with the white one previously. Now you've done your two brown knots, and as you can see from the pattern, you finish off this row with one white knot, but now you don't have the white string in the mix. So what do you do? The exact same thing. It's just been hanging out here in the background, not really doing anything, so now you're going to bring that white string in the same way you brought in the brown one. It's going to go behind these two yellow strings because they are already in knots. They've already been used in this row. So that white string is going to go behind those two strings and it's going to go over the top of the brown string, which is your current knotting or tying string. And once it goes over that current tying string, it's just going to finish off that row by tying on to that last yellow string on the right there. And this is going to be how you finish off that row. So now you've effectively made that white string your tying string once again, and that brown string is just hanging out in the background doing nothing. So hopefully that made sense. <laughs> now the next row, you've got another white knot, two brown knots, and then you finish off that row with white. So you're going to use that same white string that you just did, tie onto the exact same yellow string that you just did, this time going back in the opposite direction, but now you need brown again. So that brown string is going to come back in, go over the white string, which was your current tying string, and replace it. So now you're going to continue tying on with that brown string, effectively replacing that white string as your tying string. So there is your first brown knot in that row, and then you keep going, working from right to left using backward knots, and there is the second brown one. So now if you remember from the pattern, the rest of that row is white. You've done that one white and two brown, so you have to do four more white, but your white string is in the background again. So hopefully you remember at this point, you're not going to do anything with those strings that are already in knots in that row. That white string is just going to go behind them, and then it's going to go over the top of your current knotting or tying string, which is the brown one. And it's going to go over top of it and replace it. And then it's going to tie on to that next yellow base string and it's going to replace it. So now you tie on with that and you're just going to finish off the rest of that row with your three white knots and continue on the same way you always have. Now you've done that last row in white and you can continue your bracelet with several more rows of white or you can repeat this pattern. So this is a different way of presenting these alpha patterns. The only difference with this is you're using bubbles instead of this graph sort of design. And I guess some people like these bubbles because it shows you where those strings are coming in and out. So these white strings at the top, you can see exactly what color your base strings are in this pattern. Then the first tying string it shows you is A. It's this blue string. And then it shows you where you're going to be flipping over and using your base strings. Now C over here is a new color of string that's coming into the mix. And it's just hanging out in the background until it pops in in the middle of the pattern there with that backward knot. And you can see in the background where these strings are coming through and then reappearing at various places in the pattern because it shows all of this in the pattern right there in front of you. So some people like this. I don't think it's completely necessary, but that is just another type of alpha pattern and it works exactly the same way as this one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. It really helps me out. Mm -hmm.